Hey everybody, welcome back to another video about OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now we were here just a short week ago talking about how to install OpenCore Legacy Patcher, what to look out for, do's and don'ts, and all that stuff. So if you have not seen that video, I highly recommend you watch that first because I will not be covering the entire install process in this video. This video is just to talk about an update that the OpenCore Legacy Patcher team has done since I recorded that last video. So let me pull up their website real quick. Link in the description. And you'll end up on this website here. Go to how do I get started? Click run the OpenCore Patcher app. And then click OpenCore Legacy Patcher released. And here's the latest version. Now, if you have seen the last video I recorded on this, you remember we were here. The current version at the time was 0.3.3, .3, and I was using the TUI, or Terminal User Interface application, to install OpenCore and go through the whole patching process. But what they have done since then is released the 0.4.1 update that now has the graphical user interface or GUI patcher application in line with the terminal one. Before I used the terminal version of the patcher because it corresponds with all the instructions on the website. Downloading the installer, creating the installer, uh, it was all done with terminal commands on the website. So I showed you in the video how to do this all with the terminal user interface because it was easier to follow the website that way. But now they have updated the graphical user interface application to have the same capabilities as the terminal one. Now I'm quickly going to show you the old GUI application of the OpenCore patcher. Here it is. And I'll fire up the terminal user interface version alongside it so you can understand why I chose this version in the last video. Let me minimize all this real quick. There we go. So here we have the terminal interface that we used before, and here's the graphical user interface. There are some options that are um, the same between versions. You can change the model. So in the last video, I explained how to uh, build a patcher on a Mac mini for a MacBook Pro, for example how to change the model. So in the terminal, that was done here. And in the app, it can be done down here. There are similarities, but overall, the terminal version was more capable and it was easier to follow uh, with the website as instructions. But that has changed. So let me quit out of this and close this. And we're going back to the website Now with version 041, or maybe version 28 by the time you watch this, there are some really cool improvements. First and foremost, the Patcher app is now completely redone and pretty much a graphical mirror of the terminal version. Whatever options there were in the terminal version, you're not gonna find, you're now going to find in this graphical user interface version. So that is really cool especially for people like me that really do not like the terminal much. And you'll see that in the description here as well, which I'm not gonna read to you. You can read it yourself on the website. There are some other changes with this release, some bug fixes, some improvements. Uh, one of the big ones is you can make changes to the configuration for non-metal settings. So the issue that I'm having on this Mac mini, when I go to the Apple logo, you see these squares pop up? These weird graphical anomalies? This patch update should fix that. I haven't tested it yet. I'm going on the ride with you. I haven't tested this beforehand. I just fired up the Mac mini that was still sitting on my desk. Hit record and here we go. So what we're going to do is download the latest release. Now I'm having some 
pretty serious weather and my internet keeps going out. So instead of getting the GUI app, I'm getting the GUI offline app this time. Because I do not want to find out that my internet went down as I'm running the patches. It has to reach out to the server to download the applicable patches for my system. So I'm not risking it and I'm getting the offline version, which is bigger, 540 megabytes opposed to 41 megabytes. But that's just me being safe. Put it in my applications folder. I still have the old versions here. So I'm gonna rename it real quick so I don't confuse them. Now I'm not downloading the new terminal application because it is visually the same as what it was before. Now that they have created the graphical user interface version to be just like the terminal one, I personally will be using the graphical user interface version from now on. But if you want to see how it's done using the terminal, please see my previous video. Because everything I discussed in that video still applies today, on this video. That includes making sure all your data is backed up, making sure you read this website, because it changes all the time. Read everything on this website. Is your model supported? Benefits and drawbacks, all the instructions. Always read the website first. So, now that we have our new Patcher app, let's open it up and explore a little. All right, here we go. Legacy Patcher 041. It has correctly identified my Mac Mini. And I'm currently running Legacy Patcher version 0.3.3, as you saw before. So I have an update to do. There is no new update yet for, in this case, Monterey. I'm still on version 12.1, and there is no new version since then. But I want to update the OpenCore Legacy Patcher itself to see if these weird graphical anomalies will be addressed by it. So, since I have downloaded the offline version, I no longer have to rely on my wobbly internet at the moment. So I can click build and install OpenCore and then build OpenCore and it's done. Just like before, it builds OpenCore, places it in a private directory on your hard drive. And now I can click install OpenCore. It's scanning all the drives that are in here and I'm selecting my main boot drive, which is this 500 gigabyte SSD, installing it on the EFI partition. And there we go, OpenCore has been installed. But I also want the latest patches. In my case, we go to settings, non-metal settings, enable beta blur. This is the patch that they described on the website that should take care of those weird anomalies I'm trying to get rid of. So now that I've done this setting, I'm gonna quickly build OpenCore one more time. These settings applied. Install OpenCore. Back to the EFI partition of the boot drive. Voila. Now I don't know if I should do the patch again, but it can't hurt to do it. If there are no patches needed, then it just won't install anything. So like I mentioned in my last video, after every software update, after every open core patch your update, just repatch the root volume, it can't hurt. Root patch. Please reboot the machine. All right. Let's see how it goes. How about this time? Think it works? Look at that. The weird blocks and anomalies are gone. I wonder if these buttons work on about this Mac. No. We didn't get that far. These buttons are still not working the way they should. But I've heard mixed reports. Some people have this only 
when they're using a scaler, like I am, to capture the video, some people have it on the actual system. Last time, when I hook up a monitor directly to the Mac Mini, this black uh, rectangle is not there. These anomalies were, but this rectangle was not. So your mileage may vary. It's not a deal breaker for me, but I'm glad that at least these anomalies were resolved. And mind you, a week from when I make this video, there might be another update with a better patch that fixes it even better or addresses it in a different way. This stuff is always evolving. The developers are doing an amazing job keeping on top of this. So this is not install it once and walk away forever. You want to check back on their website once in a while to see if there's an update. And speaking of updates, let's see, where's the newest one? Here we go. Firing up the app one more time. According to the website, this GUI version of the patcher should have an update checker built in. So if I have internet right now, this patcher app is reaching out to the GitHub server to see if there's a 042 or newer version available. Now this just came out, so I cannot test it right now, but that should be the case. So if you don't want to go back to the website, then fire up the Patcher app once in a while and see if it tells you, hey, there's an update. Let's go ahead and install it. And then you might still want to go back to the website to read about the changes and improvements that have that they've made over, over time. Let's see. Ah, here it is. App update checks when you open the GUI. So I'm going to take their word for it that as soon as I launched this program, it checked for updates. So that is really neat. One other big change I want to point out really quick. Let's open the Patcher app again. Is how easy it is to download and build the installer. Now you might remember from the previous video, the website listed two different commands. One for macOS El Capitan and older one for macOS Sierra and newer that you had to paste in the terminal window. It will reach out to the Apple servers, show you the available macOS installers, and you could download it through the terminal. That has changed. You can go to create macOS installer in the app and download it from in here. So what you were previously seeing in the terminal, the app is now doing in the background. And instead of a list of text, you get a nice graphical representation of all the versions currently available. So we have a few versions of Big Sur and two versions, or actually three versions of Monterey. And I'm guessing this is a beta version, but you click on it here and it starts downloading. That's it. No more terminal commands, no more copy pasting. This will just do whatever works for your system. Now, I don't see an option to stop the download. Maybe if I go back to the main menu. Ah, yes. I don't know, it might still be downloading in the background, but if you already have an installer, you can use that too. Click on it here, and if you have an installer in your applications folder, it'll show up right here. And actually, let me show you that real quick. And just like last time when I made this video, I was not prepared and did not have the installer ready. I have since used the flash drive for something else. So I had to copy the installer on there first and now I have to copy it to the Mac mini. But stick around, we'll continue in a second. With the installer now in place, we go back to the main menu, create installer, use existing, and there it is. Install macOS Monterey 12.1. Click on that, you select your flash drive, which will be erased, and it will do the entire process for you. You don't need to use the terminal commands for create install media and all that stuff anymore. Select the drive, enter your password. There you go. It will make sure the flash drive is formatted right It'll make sure that everything goes according to plan and there is zero interaction needed from you. No, I don't want to back this up. Thank you though. 
No, 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 I really don't. Bye. And when the installer is done being created, you build OpenCore, install OpenCore. In this case, you're going to install OpenCore to the install drive you just created. And then the install process is exactly like you saw in the previous video. Again, make sure you save your legacy patch, your application to the flash drive, because you'll need it again after the install to do the post install root patches. Apart from that, everything is the same. So quick update video from now on, I doubt I will be using the terminal user interface again. Uh, this is just way more convenient for me and the terminal makes me nervous. So for me, this works out. Of course, you can keep using the terminal user interface, patch your app. It'll work. It'll get the job done. It just depends on your preference. So I hope this was a useful app. I've heard a lot of people have given OpenCore Legacy Patcher a shot in the last week. Please leave a comment below. Let us know what system you installed it on, how it went, did you run into any issues, are you happy with it? I'm really curious to know what people's experiences are with this. So that's all for me today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.